local government administration in Nigeria, an offshoot of the federal political arrangements in an administration characterized by the decentralization of functions. The closeness of local governments to the grassroots enables it to perform specific functions and services which border on the concerns, interests, and aspiration of the people in the respective domains. However, it will seem that most of the local governments are not economically viable with an apparently constricted capacity to initiate and implement economic activities to boost internal revenue and also benefit the people in terms of employment and household income and poverty reduction. As such, most of the local governments, especially the rural ones that constitute 80% majority, appear to play very little role in the socio-economic well-being of the people within their areas. And to further that conversation, joining us live is Honorable Benedicta Ebuehi, Executive Chairman, Esako, its local government area of Edo State. Good morning, Honorable. Good morning, Amaka. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Now, many are keen to see the local government in the limelight at this time. How much engagement have you had with the grassroots? Well, as you know, uh, COVID-19 is a global pandemic and uh, nobody expected it. But uh, we have a responsibility to protect our people. We have a responsibility to make sure that their health is, a, is in good order. So we have risen up to the occasion by um, spreading the gospel of social distancing, washing of hands and sanitizing and all that. So we have, um, that is what we're doing at the moment across the markets, the churches, and our local communities. Mm. Help us put it in context, you know, uh, what sort of interface are you exercising with the state government at this time? Well, the state government is working very, very hard to make sure that uh, the issue of um, uh, COVID-19 is brought under control. So the synergy between the local government and the state government is a continuous one. And the state government has... Uh, provided some hand sanitizers and drums to the various local governments. They have provided training uh, so that our health workers will be on top of the game. They have also provided palliative to the local governments, which we have distributed um, to our people to, cush to cushion the um, effects of this, uh, you know, of this pandemic. As you know, um, a lot of people are not able to work right now. Some people are daily earners and uh, the palliatives the government uh, as they provided is enabling people, you know, not to feel the pain of COVID-19 so much. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that it's not all easy and rosy. So what challenges have you encountered in trying to execute your mandate relative to a state like, you know, Lagos, for instance? Well, you know, Lagos is, is actually a rich state. Um, they have a lot of resources, much more than a do state. Uh, but even at our local level, we are doing our best to make sure that uh, we, you know, fight COVID-19 pandemic. We have uh, positioned all our health workers, uh, manning the borders along with um, security agencies to control the inflow of um, people into the state illegitimately. Um, and so on that front, we are doing the best, you know, that we can. Only food uh, uh, vehicles conveying food or people carrying food are allowed. Uh, what lessons are we learning and applying to what is clearly a marathon experience? Since some are anticipating that it might take 18 months for us to see the other side of the storm of COVID-19. Yeah, well, the one of the major challenges we're having is the fact that uh, a lot of our people, you know, where I work in a rural area, a lot of our people do not believe that COVID-19 is real. They think it's a scam, but uh, we're continuing to raise awareness that this uh, pandemic is for real. And uh, we're prepared to go the long haul. Uh, in terms of uh, sensitizing our people and raising awareness for as long as we are, you know, uh, locked down for as long as this disease uh, remains uh, within our communities. So really, it's, it's a continuous pain. We have to, we have to keep at it. We have to keep talking and we have to keep also raising awareness and asking for help from people who have more than enough. But one thing I know 
is that our lifestyles are going to change after COVID-19. Mm. Things will not be the, be the same. You can see already that from the way people live, in fact, this is a wake-up call that things are not as we see them. And I believe that at the end of this pandemic, the lifestyles of Nigerians, the way we live, the way we do things will ch change drastically. All right. Honorable Benedicta Ebwehi, keep safe where you are and thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you very much, Amaka. Have a great day.